to the notebook, the race preview of Monaco. Um, yeah, here we go. Conf confirmation of a night race, confirmation of regular corner cutting, um, or regular track limit, should I say. And yeah, here we go. This is going to be epic. Let's just say that. Um, we've never raced here in SFR. Uh, the previous league of JFR, uh, which merged, didn't merge, it just came into this one in the end, basically. Um, we did a race there a couple of times and it's just chaos, isn't it? It's just absolute chaos. So, yeah, let's expect some uh, some fireworks come Sunday evening. Um, so, 39 laps of hell, sorry, 39 laps of Monaco. It's just over two mile long circuit, 2.074 miles. Ayrton Senna is the most successful driver to drive around Monaco. He had six wins. And McLaren are the most successful constructor. Last race, we obviously didn't race there in real life um, last season due to COVID. So 2019 was the last time Formula One cars went roaring around uh, Monaco, the country, the whole country basically. That's all it is. It's just one big Monaco circuit. That is the country. Um, Lewis Hamilton put it on pole with a 1 minute 10, 1, 6, 6. The race was won by Lewis Hamilton and shortly followed by Sebastian Vettel, Valtteri Bottas and Pierre Gasly got the fastest lap of a 1 minute 14.279 in the race. So, talking of Monaco, talking of circuits and times and laps, who else but to take us on a route around uh, Monaco, driving very fast, is uh, Funk Kugelnais, and uh, commentated by the wonderful as ever Nick Crofty. So please, guys, take it away and show us how it is done. Hello and welcome to the latest edition of the SFR Hot Lap Series and this week we're in Monte Carlo to take a lap around the 19 turn 3.3 kilometre jewel in the crown Monaco circuit. So taking us around is going to be the man with one of, if not, the hardest usernames to pronounce especially for a non-German speaking person like myself. It's round one winner of season two, Funf Kugelnice, AKA Five Scoops. So we pick him up as he begins his lap, coming along the front straight, opens up the DRS, so the one and only DRS zone for the entire circuit, all the way up into eighth gear. Don't know what gear he was there through St. Divide. He's a little bit sneaky with the camera angle, so I don't have any telemetry. As he goes up the hill, setting himself up for turn three, which is Bassinet. Now turn four, Casino, so nice line through there. Down the hill, over the bump, setting himself up for turn five, which is the right hand. A turn six coming up, which is the Grand Hotel hairpin. Full steering lock there, down into first gear. Turn seven, which is Mirabu, so using all the curbs there. Turn eight now, Portia, setting himself up for a good run. Easy on the power there, gets a little bit of, a little bit of brakes traction a little bit as he comes through the tunnel. Keeps a nice tight line there, wants to pick his, pick his braking mark about 75 metres out. Makes his way through the chicane there. Wants to come along now, set himself up for turn 12, which is Tibet. Takes that almost flat. Now through the swimming pool, swimming pool complex. The, the series of rights and lefts. As he comes around here, sets himself up for Raskas now. Turn 18. I've said set himself up a lot. He sets himself up one more time. Opens up the DRS. Blast down the front straight. The right, right run to the line. He gets it done in a 108.241. That's a quick time. So thank you to Funf Kugelnice for volunteering for this week's SFR Hot Lap. Uh, I hope Mr. Funf Kugelnice is watching his son race like he does. I think that's, like, that's pretty cool that he does that. So good luck to everyone on the weekend. And now it's back to my main man, Van Rocco. Wow. Okay. One minute... Eight. That is unfathomable. I cannot even think about it. I mean, I'm struggling to get in the one tens, struggling, and yet yeah, he's just smashing in a three seconds. But Monaco, I will put my hands up. Monaco's not my best track. I can't stand the place. Um, I don't even like it in real life, to be honest. It's just a boring race. Saturday's better than Sunday. 
for qualifying it's just it's just not it's not a fun race unless accidents and we don't want to see accidents that's the thing accidents mean danger accidents mean things um so yeah it's just cars driving around and that's fair enough they're just getting the money aren't they so there you go anyway prediction time here we go what do we have we have First one in is a three safety cars slash three VSCs, so three either three. Um, tribal road to finish, and no win for Fumpf. Interesting. Next one is six DNFs, one disqualification, and a safety car on lap one. Next one, seven DNFs, a safety car, and both Williams in the points. Next one is Heroics into Sandevot caught on stream. Now, it's either going to be lap one, and that's not really going to be Heroics. That's just going to be meh, piling on. Or it could be somewhere else, but who knows? That's a, that's a good shout. Teammates, teammates collide and DNF. Spicy. And a Renault top six. Last one, 30 plus points for Dutchman. Now, I'm not including Fumpf in this, even though he is the Dutch Fumpf Kugelnice. He's not Dutch, he's German. So, yeah. It's, yeah. All right, got you. Nine DNFs. That's more like it. Nine DNFs. And Mercedes to outscore Racing Point. Okay, so that's those ones. I'm going to slide in a few this week. I don't normally do them, but I will do some. I'm going to go. I don't want this to happen. I'm reverse jinxing, which I now have said it is going to happen. Um, I reckon there's going to be one full-time driver who's going to quit the league. <laughs> after the race or halfway through the race after we get wiped out i got i got a feeling uh don't want it to happen obviously but you know i'm putting it out there um i'm gonna go for only 10 finishes so everyone who finishes the race gets a point so the 10 dnfs basically um or 10 10 finishes 10 finishes i'll go for that and someone's already said safety car in lap one uh, i'm gonna go safety car lap 32 seven laps to the end there you go sorted there's my three Uh, so yeah, Monaco, it's a very tight, very fast, very tricky circuit. Like I say we are running regular corners, regular track limits, so that's a, um, yeah, it's going to cause maybe a few issues in qualifying, but in the race, I think it genuinely is the best thing to do it. I was, you know, having a conversation on the Discord last night. Karma's going to get you, isn't it? Um, if you are taking the corners too fast, which, you know, you have to be pinpoint precision in Monaco, if you're taking them too fast you are going to end up hitting a wall uh, and losing a wing or, you know, ruining your race, losing a wheel, so your DNF. So, yeah, I can see the point of people saying, well, it's going to be, you know, abused, and it probably is, but you're, you're going to end up getting karma. So, karma. So, yeah, let's just see. Let's just see how it goes. Obviously, in qualifying, if you do get a warning, just back off. I know it's hard to have that when that happens, but, you know, you get a warning in qualifying just to do try and back off from your lap let's uh let's not set any dodgy qualifying pole laps um but yeah we'll see how we go so you got turn one sound of what jeff no heroics into sound of what please we're in amongst the pack and just need to stay in one piece it's a tricky one sound of what isn't it it's you know you got to get the entry and exit nailed for up the hill into casino uh you got the left hander at casino then the tight right hander and then you're heading down towards the uh, Grand Hotel hairpin, which is absolute dog. That is going to be um, like the M25 on a Friday night at five o'clock, pile up and backed up with traffic, that is. Hopefully it's not raining because the thing I found with Monaco is obviously you've um, got wet tyres on. Which is fine for most of the lap until you go into the tunnel and then you've got the tunnel where you're on a dry track with wet tires so that could be if it is raining i'm guaranteeing we're going to have quite a few accidents inside the tunnel uh, i'll put that one there as well maybe a half prediction because it's, it's got to rain for that to happen oh uh, yeah you've got the tunnel uh, no matter what even on worn tires you're going to be you, you do struggle for grip through there and then you get spat out the other end of the tunnel into the harbor which is a you know, very hard corner if you take too much inside curb or inside wall should i say your back end is going to be spinning round and yeah the escape roads there 
so hopefully that's not going to be needed but it's, it's, it's nice that it's there because it is a heavy braking zone uh, then you've got to back swing pool my favorite section of the track not I cannot I just do Max Verstappen all the time hit that inside wall spin crash turn if there wasn't the barriers there I'd be in the uh, I'd be in the drink so yeah it's not my favorite part of the track I've DNF there probably twice actually and then we head to where where do we head to Raskas uh, probably one of the only overtaking spots and it is a very hard one you've got to be alongside or Dan uh, Dangerous down on the brakes uh, to get that inside line. Uh, like Charles Leclerc, he didn't even time it right. It was a great attempt, but obviously he hit that in his back end, hit that inside wall and got a puncture. And then, yeah, you've got the last corner, which is again very tight. It's literally onto a DRS straight. So that's pretty much it. You've got Raskas out of the tunnel and uh, Sandovot. That's it. That's your probably your three overtaking spots really hairpin is not really one because it's so tight now for these big formula one cars but there we go so that's my sort of mini track guide to monaco we've obviously had the perfect track guide by Fump and nick and we head there on sunday i'm expecting a lot of safety cars a lot of incidents so if everyone goes into the race expecting that then hopefully we won't have too many arguments after the race because let's be honest it's a computer game we all want to do as well as we can mistakes happen don't they we, we know mistakes happen you know um it just it just does so let's be as kind and considerate as we possibly can on the grid and during the race and especially afterwards as well you know let's be honest i personally don't think there is anyone in this league who would purposely go out and smash someone off that's just me so if you do get hit and dnf you know i know it's an absolute pain you've worked hard you've trained hard you've practiced but it's monaco it's monaco it's it's you've got to kind of expect it so i really hope it doesn't happen because i you know but let's be honest we're gonna have everyone is predicting five plus dnfs this weekend so we're gonna have quite a few so let's see what happens but uh yeah I would say I can't wait, but I can. I don't really want to race because I'm not going to make it past lap one. Uh, if I do make it past lap one, then it's literally just a ticking time bomb until I do DNF. So uh, if I finish on Sunday, uh, I'm not going to promise everyone a Fanatec like I did for the win in Austria. I'll promise everyone... Uh, yeah, I can't really do anything really, can I? Because I'm not going to finish. So there's no point in me even predicting anything. So there we go. Anyway, thanks for listening. I will see you on Sunday. I cannot wait, sort of. And yeah, that's me. That's done. Over and out. Thank you much, Lee. Bye-bye.